listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after show entertainment. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Once Upon a Time After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Once Upon a Time After Show. Hello, Oncers. Bing is we're doing, and we are doing another after show for Once Upon a Time Season 2, Episode 16, titled The Miller's Daughter. I'm your host, Kathy Kelly, and joining me tonight is... Hello, everyone. I'm Tiana Hobson. I'm Kawai Take. Hi, everyone. I'm Marissa Serafini. So, tonight, we got a lot of backstory about Cora. A lot we already predicted. A lot of the fans already predicted some of this stuff. We knew she was the Miller's daughter. We knew a lot of stuff, but we didn't really, f like tonight was the night where we found out why all of this started, the feud between Cora and Ava. What did you guys think? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> so much. I thought it was a really good episode and I'm not a Rose McGowan fan, but she did a really good job. She Don't did. say that around Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm biased. She's great. She yeah. did, she did really good as Cora, and I believed her. And I liked how they they showed like the whole connection, how they just tied everything and just clicked. Everything made sense. All the I I ones. did not expect Ava to be mm -hmm. a biatch. No, she yeah, was me a neither. Biatch. She yeah. was, especially um, after last week's episode where she was teaching Snow how to be, you know, right. kind and considerate to other people's feelings and yeah. all this stuff. And then you find out like Mama wasn't practicing what she was preaching mm -hmm. back in the day, but. But what, but what, what made happened? her, yeah. like, did she just mature, or? I I feel like there's more to this story. Yeah. I feel like we, we did not get all of it. Story. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully we will find out more <laughs> by the end of the season. I don't know if it's going to happen, but there's definitely more to this story. One little trip <laughs> does not cause someone to be that evil and go on a mass murdering spree. It just doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. Her down <laughs> years later to yeah. make sure she dies. Yeah. yeah, there has to be something more to it, of yeah. course. Yeah, but Definitely. I mean, it didn't seem like that one trip turned a really nice girl into an evil person. Mm -hmm. It seemed like she was mean to her father before, even if he was kind of being lazy. It seemed like there were some other things in her backstory that we didn't really get to see. I think that trip kick-started her dark path because if you remember with Rumpel when he had to kiss that guy's foot, um, you know that that sparked something in him to turn evil, and you know, like he never let that go. And but he had yeah. that grudge. he had a lot of stuff that um, was preemptive to that kiss that led him to be dark. I feel right. like it wasn't just the kiss. It was everything behind it, how he was a coward before. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I mean, and I mean, the same can be said of Cora too. She was kind of, you know, the stepping stone for a lot of people. Her father was a drunk and wasn't really doing it. They were poor. She goes there and the King was embarrasses her in front of the entire you know, courtyard. And she blames it on the she, child, Ava. Yeah. Do, do, when you guys were looking at this backstory of Cora, did you feel bad for Cora? No. Um, Me neither. Oh. A little bit. <laughs> no, I, I did feel a little bit bad. I mean, the fact that we saw Ava in a different light was really eye-opening. Um, so it wasn't just that Cora was jealous of her. It was that Ava did something to set off Cora. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was... Um, the king, he kept just, you know, putting salt in that wound, just kept knocking her down in front of everyone. Like, you're just the Miller's daughter. You, like, what else did he say? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he, he was just very condescending. And there has to be something else because we know that Cora doesn't become a queen. Um, and, I mean, she says yeah. that Regina is destined to become queen, but there has to be something where um, her and Henry fall from that throne. 
um, or never make or it there. Make yeah. It, yeah, because we know Henry is just you know this this dude that like follows him yeah. around. Yeah. Dude he's is not right. a puppy dog. He's not, <laughs> he's not a king by any means. So no. he was never going to be able to rule that country. Yeah, it wasn't that, a very land. majestic feeling. No a royalty. No, but. him and his father were polar opposites. <laughs> <laughs> So um, Cora is really trying to better herself in this entire episode. We can tell that she wants power this entire episode. She wants to move up the ranks from being just the Miller's daughter to being queen. Um, and she ends up stealing or somehow getting a dress, going to this ball, uh, masquerade ball, to meet the prince and potentially marry him. Um, she gets called out by the father <laughs> when she's flirting with Prince Henry and that is one of the instances where he does embarrass her again <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, two so, times in one day mm -hmm. that's yeah. kind of rough yeah so he proposes uh, I mean she kind of storms out in a way that I'm sure everyone has stormed out like oh <laughs> you guys I'm, I'm better than you <laughs> like I can turn straw into gold <laughs> um, she, she storms out and he's like I'm going to call your bluff if you can sit in this room locked up turn all this straw into gold you can have my uh son's hand in marriage if you can't we're gonna kill you it's kind of it's different than the rumpelstiltskin story that we all heard growing up yes which slightly is, which was he okay how, she was she able was able to get the king if she turned yeah. the straw into gold not yeah, the, the prince it, was, it wasn't the prince it was the king that she was going to get and there are a couple more dissimilarities in yeah. the story mm -hmm. but i mean that's how the i like ones always tells on it. it yeah yeah because you know i liked how well i mean we'll get to that part in a minute i have to mention for all of those who aren't watching uh tiana has her <laughs> mad hatter hat that she picked up at disney today <laughs> i went to disney disneyland today for my mom's birthday and i got a little treat it's the mad hatter hat it's in honor of Jefferson, we miss you. <laughs> sure sure enough, I do. Yeah. <laughs> and they said they're going to try to bring him back. Yeah. Not for his own spin-off I got some more news on that later. We'll okay. talk about it. Okay. <laughs> um, so they lock Cora in this room. Expect her to turn the straw into gold. Obviously, she can't. But she she ends up contemplating jumping out the window. Did anyone else notice <laughs> that? Like, either you're going to die when you jump out the window, or you're going to die tomorrow when they realize that... I you think didn't do anything. She was just, you know, embarrassed after embarrassment. She was like, I might as well die or I'm going to be embarrassed again. I think they just showed the fact that there's really no way out. Yeah. And she was trying to escape. She's and she couldn't. really stuck there that yeah. she has to string it into a gold or she is going to die. Yeah. So Rumpelstiltskin shows up. We knew that there was something going on with them. Um, from earlier in the season when they shared that little... That kiss? Yeah. yeah. And she called her master. really uncomfortable, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we learned a lot more about that. <laughs> that we did. So, yeah. um, this was definitely a late night show <laughs> tonight. <laughs> yeah. If you uh, had your kids watching, you probably were covering their eyes scared of what might happen next. Not Disney. <laughs> it was a bit sensual. Yeah. Oh, um, very sensual. Very sensual. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, of course, as Rumpelstiltskin always does, he creates a deal. He says he will teach... Well, of, first, actually, he offers to do it for her. She's like, actually, I want you to teach me. Which was smart. Oh, yeah. very, very smart. Very smart. Um, so she could do it in front of the king because... Um, what is the story of Rumpelstiltskin where he wants her to do he, it? Her, the girl. I don't know. Uh, like... I believe it's the the girl asked Rumpel or not Rumpel but Rumpel Stillskin. Yeah, it is. I'm getting all my stories messed up. <laughs> Rumpel Stillskin to do something, and then she keeps tricking him into doing like more and more. And then yeah. and the other dissimilarity between this story is that he tells her his name because I think the reason he says at the very right. end of Rumpel Stillskin he says. I will let you keep your firstborn if you can guess my name. Yeah, I and mean, that's what it was. They sent someone out to all the neighborhoods trying to figure out mm -hmm, what his mm -hmm. name was. So every night while he was while she was doing that, like someone was looking for his name. And then finally he was like dancing around a fire mm -hmm. and, and he was, sing he was yeah. singing yeah. his name yeah. around the fire. And then the maid woman or whatever goes back to her and tells yes. this, this is his name. Yeah. Um, very dark story. 
as are yes. most of the original fairy tales if and you it's ever a read short them. story too mm-hmm. yeah, yeah it's really short yeah um so he says that you've earned my name uh which kind of means that you've earned his trust and he ends up teaching her how to turn straw into gold it's that very central moment it almost reminded me of during ghosts oh my god they have the they have the wheel the pottery wheel and he's behind her spinning like yeah. this wheel behind demi moore and it's just like <laughs> i'm teaching you it's a very central moment when it shouldn't be at all it's very awkward but that is what i thought tonight yes that's exactly <laughs> what i thought of um, it wasn't it, the same feeling though it wasn't the same it was like, creepier oh, yeah. i kept wanting the green to like show up on her shoulder because his face oh, yeah. is like rubbing on his shoulder. Oh, and I'm like, oh please turn green. <laughs> yeah. Um, he looked especially creepy tonight. Was that just me? No, I agree too. Like you can really see the details in all yeah. his face, his teeth. Yeah, mm-hmm. his yeah. Teeth. Mm-hmm. It's really close up. I always wonder how many hours of makeup he has to go through. He's, oh yeah. Um, at the it? Paley Fest, they someone asked that, and he said it, it started off with two hours, and now they have it down to one hour. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it still takes him a long time to get it off. Yeah. So that would not be fun. Yeah. Because yeah. his call time in the morning is like four a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's another thing that's not fun. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, so Rumple is teaching Cora how to do this, and he says that magic, you can't think about it. And it, it was interesting in the way that um, when he was teaching Emma, which we'll talk about later, mm-hmm. how to do magic, he said the same thing. It's like magic is emotion. You have to harness mm-hmm. that emotion. And what I think about every time I use my magic is the guy that made me kiss his feet, I imagine basically killing him, chewing his veins, and Cora calls this bloodlust. Absolutely awful imagery. Yeah. I do dark. not want to imagine that, but it is it is very dark. Yeah. And I feel like for this entire series, I've always known that they're dark people, but this was the first episode where I was really like, oh my gosh, like they're not just killing people. These are evil people. Yeah, you're getting into the mind or yeah. the psyche. Yeah, especially I those s- two together because the emotion they were using to conjure up magic was already evil, angry, Hate. just yeah, hateful like, yeah. magic. Whereas Emma, which we'll talk about later, it was I felt like hers was like a nicer thing. Like I need to protect my son. Yeah, and it's and good. The people it's I pure. love. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so they're using this absolutely evil emotion to <laughs> conjure magic, and <sighs> very weird. So what ends up happening is they end up changing the deal to be uh, Rumpel will not get Cora's firstborn. Instead, they f- fall in love, seemingly, um, and he will now get their firstborn, essentially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was that weird? I mean, it changes the storyline a little bit. It, it does. does I thought that he was actually going to be I Regina's be dad. I was like, oh, too. I was hoping for that. Like, I was Regina's like, oh my god, father. I need to see this family tree again. Yeah. Because now somewhere in there, like incest has happened. If that had been the case, I don't know. And and we've always said we're like we don't think that Henry is Regina's father. He just seems too meek and like he mm-hmm. doesn't seem like that's actually her biological dad. And now I guess it's it it's is. not confirmed, but, but it kind of is. Yeah. So. Yes. Very odd. I mean, there might yeah. be a twist later. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we, we have always known that Cora was never really in love with Henry. Yeah. We've always yeah. speculated yeah. that, and now that is definitely confirmed. So Cora spins the gold. Prince Henry proposes. She second guesses it for a little bit because she says that she is in love with Rumple. Mm-hmm. I don't know how and anyone she, could be. Yeah. <laughs> um, and... She approaches the king and says, you know, I have this choice between power and love. Kind of want to choose love. He's like, you're an idiot. We all thought she took out his heart. Wasn't the case. That is when she took out her own. What did you guys think? It was smart right at first to take out her own because she's protecting herself. But then, in the end, it kind of kicked her in the behind. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It was... 
mean, because we knew that she took out her own heart, but I guess I didn't realize she did it so young. Mm-hmm. I guess so. Yeah, I, mean, I thought she did it. Yeah, much I thought she later did it and later like... on, maybe before. I mean, maybe after having Regina or something. But I mean, it explains a lot. But I don't understand. I mean, I understood why she did it, but at the same time, what kind of power yeah. are you really gaining? Because she didn't even end up being queen. So that but was it, kind of a waste. For she her. did end up being queen of hearts. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is, is interesting to understand how that happened as well. Well, that's another world, isn't yeah. it? So that, yeah. that comes into play later. Um, but another thing, it shows that she's already learned how to string, straw into gold and take out a heart in a matter of a day. Yeah. She she can learn a lot. Yeah. She's very powerful as we've yeah. seen that. I mean her her power just kept on growing and mm-hmm. growing. And so, I, I'm curious to see what's how they're gonna explain how Rumpel decided to teach her magic. Because after what he did what she did to him, why would she, she he want to help her? Why would he teach Cora, or Regina? why would he teach Regina magic? Or Cora as well. Like, ah, I, I see you know why I mean? he taught Cora, because he thought that he was in love with her. But I mean, like, I, th- I feel like she learned more after she became queen. Because she knew how to harness it, so I don't think that she needed to learn anymore. I mean, taking out a heart, I think, is the, one of the most difficult things that you can do. He taught her how to do that, mm. and he taught her that, um, you know, doing magic is just emotion. We know that... Rumpelstiltskin is the most powerful because he is the dark one. Mm-hmm. So I feel mm-hmm. like she could mm-hmm. never be as powerful as him without the dagger. But I just took it as it was more than just probably the two days that we saw them together yeah, for their maybe. love to blossom, where he was mm-hmm. yeah. coming to her every night, teaching her new things right. so that she, by time she, because I feel like you have to be a powerful person already to take out a heart. Mm-hmm. That's not like day two stuff. So yeah. you guys are saying so, like pretty much like once yeah, there was probably more uh, the heart yeah. was gone, then he wasn't teaching her anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's possible. And if you need emotion to harness magic, Cora had a lot of emotion. Negative emotion. Yeah, <laughs> she has a lot too. of it though. So there is enough to do a lot of damage. Well, she, she wanted to make the people bow on their kneecaps to crack uh-huh. and necks break, and that's very negative as well. Mm-hmm. And graphic. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Very graphic. Yeah. Bloodlust. Um, mm-hmm. That's Bloodlust. what the title should have been. That yeah. should have been. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Regina is born. Cora names uh-huh. her Regina because yeah. she says one day she will be queen. We all knew it was baby yeah. Regina, but just very, very we, weird. We need validation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and she she ditches Rumpel. Yep. She's like, I want power. I don't want you. Which makes me believe that she never truly loved him. I feel like Belle is his true love. Hmm. Yeah. But he was yeah, just... I think that him and Belle's relationship is just a, b- a better, healthier one. Because and he mm-hmm. said that later yeah, in the episode. He does say that. it's it, They were polar opposites of each other where that their relationship Cora and Rumpel were all evil and Mm -hmm. let's do bad things together and then you have Belle who's actually making him a better person and taking him back to who he used to be and that's what I feel like anyone wants in a relationship not just in a magical world you want someone who has the ability to make you a better person exactly yeah you need that and, and Belle and Rumpel, they, <laughs> they both loved each other. It was mutual love, whereas Cora and Rumpel looked like it was just one-sided. I No, I genuinely believe that Cora loved Rumpel. She even said that in the very end, which we'll talk yeah. about. Yeah, um, I think so, too. So I, I do believe that she loved him. I just don't think that it was a true love. Because I think her true love is honestly power. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's herself, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So... Or maybe Regina. I don't know. Mm. No. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about all the things that happened in Storybrooke. But before we get into that, I just want to mention, if you are watching us on AfterBuzzTV.com or if you're watching us on YouTube, then also make sure to go over to iTunes and subscribe to our podcast over there. All you have to do, type in After Buzz TV. You can find our Once Upon a Time podcast. And then please rate and comment because we really do read all of those comments. We're continuously trying to improve <laughs> our podcast. If you guys have any predictions, then we definitely want to hear them. Um, we got a lot of great reviews this past week. So thank you to Alicia529, um, Ike, 
Silly Lily 101 and Broadway 1014. You guys were amazing. You all left us um, really nice comments and um, some cool predictions as well. And then also thanks to everyone who's commented on our YouTube page. We love hearing your predictions. And also if we forget something during the episode, you guys are always there <laughs> yeah. to tell us the, the right thing. Um, and a special shout out to Sylvia Elisa 22, who gave us the name of the flower from last yes. episode. It was called Snowdrop. 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 Yeah. So easy. Why yeah. didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, duh. Yeah. Sometimes you guys are smarter. I than tried. Us. <laughs> I tried looking it up, and I was like, snow flower, snow something. <laughs> yes. So. We knew that it was something along those lines, right. but you guys are always there to get our backs. So. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank, yes, you, thank you. So, back in Storybrook, or I guess they're on their way to Storybrook is where we start out. They're on the ship. How? Yeah. Yeah, they're they're all on their way back. <laughs> Where is uh, Captain Hook? Ooh, ooh, uh, I know. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's he's still locked in the basement at um, Neil's apartment. Yeah, how is he gonna um, come back? Yeah, well, okay. Here's here's a little tip for you guys. He actually broke his Colin O'Donoghue broke his <laughs> yeah. leg, and so for the next couple episodes, we're not really gonna see oh. Hook around because he broke his leg, and so they had to find a way to give him time I, to heal. I How saw the that? video at Paley Fest, and he was limping. Yeah. I was like, yeah. "Are you trying <laughs> to be uh, so this, Rumpelstiltskin?" <laughs> yeah, this is like the hookless time because of That's this is when so he broke his leg. That's so sad. <laughs> I want him back. Yeah, I was like, "Well, all this excitement is happening. Hook's nowhere." around to enjoy mm -hmm. it i think that this is actually a blessing in disguise though because i feel like emma and neil need some bonding time yeah. away from his fiance Ugh. i do not approve of that I neil know. that girl Ugh. <laughs> you saw it for like split even second. though she's probably a really nice girl i just don't <laughs> want them to be together together so that's my two cents but they're on the ship back to storybrook um which we didn't see how they found it, but it seemed very easy. <laughs> and and Bay seemed to be very at home steering that, navigating that ship. And achieved. teaching his yeah. son. Yeah. Maybe he's done it before. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's called Neverland. That was yeah. another prediction that um, I heard from our fans. They said, you know, you guys keep on saying that Neil is Peter Pan, but what if he's just a lost boy? That could work, too. That could work, too. He's definitely someone from in that world. I, yes. yeah. I think yeah. I just want him to be Peter Pan Me too. because... I just think he's I a mean, point to Peter Pan. Yeah, yeah because he's a, his fiance. we kind of think she's Tiger Lily. I don't know. Yeah. Well, he's such a big character in Storybrook mm -hmm. that I, it'd be kind of a shame if he was just a lost boy that's not developed into a character. Can Neil fly? Um, are we gonna get an episode about a shadow? Are we gonna get <laughs> <laughs> Neil loses his shadow? Are we gonna get Tinkerbell? How to get funny! Married us? How funny would that be though if they're like, if there's some episode where there's sun and you see everyone's shadow except for Neil's and you're like, <laughs> that's the reveal. Like, how cool would that be? <laughs> Maybe. That would be a good reveal. Awesome. I know. Where's your shadow? That would be so good. Why don't you have a shadow, Neil? What's or, going on? Or his shadow could help out in some way later. That would be kind of like cool. This. I like this. I like, I like this. <laughs> Keep going. But he could also be a lost boy. That is yes. a good. That mm -hmm. is a good prediction from the mm. fans. Something out there that we too. haven't really explored yeah. yet. We're right. just overly we're, excited. <laughs> we're focusing we're on one land. thing, mm -hmm. and you know, sometimes it's good to have the outside opinions coming in. Like, well, don't forget, there's other people besides Peter Pan yes. who are in Neverland, <laughs> which is true. Yeah. So <laughs> Grumpel is on the ship along with everyone else. Um, he's still poisoned. Definitely getting worse. Um, we saw in the last episode this candle that can potentially save someone by taking someone else's life. And Snow refused to use it mm. on her own mother. So why would she use it yeah. on Rumpel? I think because she considers Rumpel family right now and she felt like such a failure from last episode that she felt like this is the only way to kind of fix things i i hate 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 that he is blaming snow for doing this um for killing cora and telling regina basically to go after her because i feel like it is all rumple's plan to get someone else to do this so that he doesn't have to take the blame he said he almost coaxed 
Snow into doing it because he's like, well, what would Henry think of you if you let mm. his grandpa die? She wouldn't yeah. have done it yeah. had he not the said that. The reverse side of that is what would Henry do when he finds out that you killed his great grandma? Exactly. Yeah, his, like, ad- on his adoptive side. So the whole time when she's thinking of doing this, I'm just thinking, whoa, do you really want to piss off Mama Bear Regina over here? Because, I mean, her and her mother have their ups and downs, but Regina always, always protects her mother. Mm -hmm. Right. So she's going to have another war. on. Like, it might end this battle, but it's going to create this whole other war with Regina now, who originally Regina just wanted Henry back. She wasn't in this for the power or for any of that. She just was in it for Henry. But now she's out for revenge yeah. to, for her mom. I'm so mad the way that they played those promos last week because they said <laughs> one of our own or one of their own will die. One of our own. One of their own will die. And so I thought that it was going to be one of the good guys. Mm-hmm. And I did not expect it to be Cora whatsoever. But if you look at the Once Upon a Time Facebook photo they had they asked that same question with the pictures of all the characters mm-hmm. that could have died and Cora was the only bad one well there was Rumple too but it was Cora Rumple Snow Emma Prince Charming and it's like, I immediately after seeing that image I immediately thought Cora she's the only one that really sticks out yeah, yeah my thought was it's not going to be one of like the big big people mm-hmm. so it had to be a smaller and I was like I want it to be Cora I'm not sure if they're ready to get rid of her though but I was expecting it to be like a red Geppetto or, or yeah. Red or someone like that. Not that I want any of those characters gone either. <laughs> Even but August. Yeah, that's just who I thought it would be. But then once no one else was around, which the whole town must have been sleeping during this whole thing. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. There was a lot of noise and no one came out to check on anything. <laughs> Mr. Gold Shop is not far from Granny's. If everyone was hanging out at Granny's, someone would have heard something <laughs> and maybe come over to help. I don't know. I would, I would just say, if I knew that Cora and Regina were on the loose and they had hatred in their eyes, I would lock myself in my basement. <laughs> That's just me, but... Maybe with Hook. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's a really good idea, Georg. <laughs> just one of those. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, it was, it was a very weird... Like, it was a great episode. It was a very mm-hmm. weird and unpredictable episode mm-hmm. in my eyes. Um... We see Snow struggle between good and evil, last episode and this episode, um, which I didn't think she had it in her to do that, honestly. Ooh, when she told Regina that whole sob story, Mm. I was like, oh my gosh, you're an evil genius, Snow. Like, this is the kind of stuff Regina does to you all the time, and you're using that weakness she has for her mother against her right now to actually get her to be the one to... I wanted her to do it. Finish off her mom. I was happy yeah. when she did that. Yeah. And it was it was almost like a good evil. Yeah. So I was she looked proud of her she looked moment. amazing with the candle and like mm-hmm. saying Cora, Cora. I thought oh, it was creepy. amazing. <laughs> nice creepy element. Yeah. So sad though that she didn't use that on her mother originally. Yeah. We wouldn't yeah. have had any of these problems. But I liked how Snow White touched on the humanity side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. she sparked that within Regina because that's Regina. Like yeah. she's there is still good in her, I mm-hmm. believe. And Regina consider that. Like just pointing out that no love. If she had love in her, in her life, she'd be yeah. a better person. Mm-hmm. Backtracking a little bit. We person. didn't mention this earlier in, you know, old the old enchanted the forest. Flashback. But mm-hmm. the fact that Snow's mother was also kind of evil at one point i mean she was going through her nasty Mm -hmm. teenage years obviously (laughs) but she i mean we always see her as this amazing woman we saw in the last episode how amazing woman she is i'm blanking on her name right now ava ava Ava, queen ava Ava. um and i mean obviously she still comes to power in some way to become a queen Mm -hmm. but i just did not expect that from her at all i just thought that you know Regina or uh, Cora was going to be evil because she was jealous, not because Ava did something to Mm -hmm. spark that in her. I liked how they showed that someone can change. There is the possibility. Mm -hmm. For the good or the worse. Yeah. 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 And no one is completely pure or completely evil. It is a choice. That it is. You think it's a choice? 
I think it's a choice. It's a choice. <laughs> but don't you think it's it, a choice with humans? Don't you think it makes it easier if you're like innately evil to go evil, or if you're innately good to go good? I think everyone is no, easier. Everyone can be dealt the same hand, and it's what you do with it. That's true. Right. But if you think about it, Snow White has Prince Charming to help her stay good. And Cora, ha- who did Cora have? Cora had Rumpel mm-hmm. whispering in her ear, uh, in her ear about all like going down the dark path. You she could have gone to some pub and met some nice dude. <laughs> but she didn't want I mean, to. it's but not it's like, like <laughs> she wanted power. It's not like that wasn't pub. an option. But Snow White <laughs> is surrounded by good people, and Cora doesn't seem like Cora seems like she was by herself. She didn't have positive out like other people to help her i'm sorry but in real life if you have an alcoholic father you can still marry a nice dude and yeah. like, <laughs> it's not like it's that difficult it's what you choose what you make with those choices the hands that you're dealt mm-hmm. um i feel like she she made the worst of it mm-hmm. and yes you might have a mean girl at school you might have like all of these <laughs> things but it's what you do with it and she was not she wasn't nice but i mean the same could be said the opposite actually because snow does have positive people around her to help her decisions but she still went there and got that heart did the candle and essentially killed cora like even though snow has this positive influence you get screwed over so many times even a good person can go dark mm-hmm. so the same could be true about yeah. someone who's, you know, evil and, and could even, change over. Even with those, you know, doing something evil, I feel like she still had good intentions with all of it. I agree. Yeah. She did have good intentions. Um, I mean, the, then to play devil's advocate, okay. the same could be said of Cora because her intentions the whole time was just to give her daughter a better life, to make her daughter a queen, to... I mean, she's fueled by. Mm. That's what she How many was people has she fueled by. Needlessly killed. There have been so many people that she has. I feel like everything is not. It's while some of it is for her daughter, everything is for more power and like more magic and all of these things. It's all about her. Like, if she truly cared about other people, she would have ditched the throne and ended up with Rumpel, who was her true love or whatever. I mean, I guess he wasn't her true love, but... Yeah. But, but see, she truly loved him. You think, you think about it, she gave up her true love to get power, so maybe for her, that was like the ultimate yeah. sacrifice, because in her mind, being good was to make that sacrifice and get power, which is good in her mind. I know that sounds kind of twisted. Yeah. I think that but in her own mind, she thought she was doing necessary evils to fulfill the greater good just yeah. like snow is doing a necessary evil to fulfill the evil good just when that happens there's there's no good that comes from it mm-hmm. ever because someone on one side or another is always going to end up hurt and in this case core our regina's hurt when henry finds out he might be hurt just because he does still love regina like she still did raise him she has ties to her yeah as I, well it's just i mean when you walk that line no good can come from anything she's just i just don't think i i don't think that they were good intentions if you're about to kill off the person the only person that you ever loved who wasn't your kin like mm-hmm. i mean if you think about it the only people that were G- or that cora has ever loved is regina potentially she kind of cares about uh henry uh, not kid not Henry. her hundred hen- not kid her Henry. husband okay. Henry yeah kid her Henry. kid Henry um, and she kind of cared about Rumpel but obviously not enough to sacrifice power those are the only people that and she's willing to kill Rumpel well mm. I mean she she's an evil biatch <laughs> I'm just gonna say it there's no she, like she is evil I I agree that she's she evil is. I just don't agree that Snow's doing the right thing here. Oh, no. Yeah, she's two wrongs not. don't make it right. Yeah. But it, the you, fact that she's repentful for it afterwards exactly. shows that she is still the good person. Yeah. But do you think the ends justify the means? No, no because no. I think that now there's just no. more problems. Yeah. What they need is they need Archie. They all need to sit down <laughs> at the table. This whole family needs to come together Group for therapy. like a Thanksgiving dinner and just have have it out like just give get to the point of forgiveness guys like just forgive forget move on thanksgiving special would yeah be great. thanksgiving special <laughs> starring the crazy charming family 
That would yeah. be great. That's but that's all they need. Don't you guys ever feel like Snow has, is like spoiled? Like everything is laid out there for her to be good. Do you know what I mean? She I, definitely has conflicting I, issues. You know, she, you can see she she, she <laughs> I can't even think about it. That like she has trouble deciding good and bad, but she needs other people to help her along the way. I think that's the same thing with people. There's mm. no one who is always going to be perfect in every way and good in every way there's no one who's going to be evil in every way they all have you know there are times like uh cora is good when it comes to her daughter most of the time not all of the time Mm, um she's good when it comes to you know things that benefit her um but you know snow is usually good but there are some times when she has evil tendencies we saw her when it's all about the choice and i feel like that's what the Mm -hmm. writers are trying to get us to (laughs) learn it's all about the choice the choices you make Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and that magic comes with the price those are the two lessons Thank you for that. <laughs> You're teaching us so much. Um, so David was kind of MIA during this entire fight. <laughs> he was knocked out very he early on. knocked out yeah. a lot. Let's yeah. talk about this. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Really. Prince Charming, you want to go back to, to old time fairy tale land. You want to go back to your world because you missed your sword. But dude, you got to stop getting knocked out every time there was a fight. He sleeps through all the fights. You're not around. I mean, Snow is a badass. Yeah, Snow is she's she's always taking care of her pieces. Yeah. yeah, I feel like Charming should want to stay put with his iPhone and electricity here and not be trying to get back to ogres and stuff. Because it's because he didn't have to fight until he was, you know, a late teenager. Yeah. He never had to do anything. He just sat on his farm and like gets got some grain and milked some cows and stuff. And then yeah. all of a sudden, he's like supposed to be this warrior, and he's not. But he did try. Yeah, he does know? try. He made the valiant effort he does he does he, he does what every guy does he tries <laughs> <laughs> did you just snore? no i didn't <laughs> i did sorry <laughs> but any, oh i also wanted to point out that david i loved i loved his fatherly like looks today when he was around um neil because mm-hmm. when they first got off the boat and Henry was like, oh, I, I learned how to drive a boat. And he was like, my dad taught me. And Neil's uh-huh. like, yeah, that's me. And David just looking like, I love that like, too. Who are you? Yeah. Like, we need to have a talk later because yeah, you right. left my girl and she was pregnant. And, right? <laughs> we, hit, we still yeah, have to see that conversation. See that happen. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he had a lot of too much going there on. Where there was like fatherly mm-hmm. just looks, those looks. I, I love like, that. Oh, yes. And it's so confusing because they're all the same <laughs> age. Right. How weird. I want to talk about the invisible chalk for a minute. Really? Very. (laughs) Out of all the things, this is the one thing I'm going to pick on during this episode. Out of all the things that you could have created, like, why invisible chalk? Is there some deeper meaning? And maybe fans at home, like, if you know a deeper meaning, if there's something in in a fairy tale somewhere, anything... I don't understand the the meaning behind it. Might as well chalk. just use salt, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, there, we've or seen real it. chalk. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> it didn't help at the front door, right? Didn't she draw a line? Oh no, because they were standing outside, yeah. and she that's when they broke through the first one with the fireball. It. Yeah, with the fireball. Okay, now now I remember. Okay, I thought it just didn't work. Yeah, I don't think like invisible chalk. They could have used something Isn't more. Is it Harry visual? Potter where they use chalk at some point to? No, what? There's You're some. Thinking of a little princess when she draws a circle on yeah, the floor. Yeah, what is that for? Um, it was to like get away her bad dreams or something. Or there, there's some movie that has yeah, it's a little chalk on the floor. And she yeah, draws it and then she's like laying in the middle of the floor and she's crying and. I think there's another, oh, one, there another with one with witches though. Oh, Hocus Pocus. Hocus, Hocus Pocus. Pocus. It's a circle of salt, though. Yeah, it is it's salt. salt. They okay. use actual yeah. Epsom salt. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. If someone could explain the invisible chalk to us, that would be awesome. If there is no explanation, maybe it's just someone, you know, one of the writers had this in a dream. But they could have used, like, a more visual element, like potion mm-hmm. or something to maybe I think just use our This is a very cheap way, instead of using green screen or right. <laughs> having to, yeah. you know, do some more... I kind of wanted to see, But they did put like, up the shield, though. So yeah, I wanted yeah, to see some. Emma do more magic, maybe, instead of the invisible chalk maybe just see emma doing more of this magic that 
we're still kind of figuring out what exactly ABC is gives them a budget. Yeah. <laughs> no, my question: What exactly is Emma's power? Because we saw her control, like the the dream or the memories from mm-hmm. the Dreamcatcher out of Will, and she enacted this shield out of Will. What is her actual power? She's so. she's the Willer. She's innately she, magical. I don't she know. She can will things to to come to being to purpose. What Something. is it? It's because she's a child of true love. Yeah. And that's the so most powerful pro- and magic yeah, product out there. of true love. Um, is Henry a product of true love? Maybe Between Neil and Emma? Well, I don't know. He's engaged and a little upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> but we know. Is Neil from- magical, though? Um, mm-hmm. He could be. It's possible. I-, I mean, like, we know that if he is. Peter Pan, he has, like, magical fairy dust, but he is not innately magical. But, I mean, Snow and Prince Charming weren't magical, and Emma's magical. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's... Didn't they explain it as a child born out of true love is magical? So Emma's magical. Yeah, I I think that it was more that it's Snow and Charming's, like, the purest form of true love is the strongest magic. And because yeah. they created Emma, that's why she got it. So maybe it's maybe Snow and Charming's magical thing is like their love. Okay. No one's love is like their love because they will always find each Baby, other. Baby, nobody's got a love like our love. <laughs> <laughs> I know, sounds like a cheesy line, right? Yeah, uh, I love it. <laughs> uh, so we talked about the candle. We talked about the invisible truck. There was a moment that I want to talk oh. about the fight scene. Oh. And <laughs> was it yes. something else? Oh, I thought you were going somewhere else, but we'll, I'll get to that after. Okay. <laughs> I want to okay. talk about the fight scene because we were all wondering why all of a sudden, you know, Regina has Emma up in a chokehold and Cora pops back from her purple magic and she is choking. Or like she, it looks like she's not she's choking, but something, for breath. Something, yeah, yeah, something is wrong. So what? What's the explanation for that? I had a radical thought that uh, Cora's heart was in Emma because Emma was getting choked by Regina. So if she, Emma was getting choked, it would affect Cora as well. But that didn't seem like... I, I feel like it was way too easy to find Cora's heart. If people yeah, have been I looking agree. for it for so long, then why was it so easy? Why was it glowing in all of the hearts? It just didn't make sense to me. I think that... She- I don't know, maybe she put some sort of spell on her heart to detect when, like, intruders were near. Because I took it as she could feel that something something she, was near her heart that mm-hmm. shouldn't be. She did were, say that to Regina, yeah, like, they were, they're like, going after my heart. And that maybe that's why it was lit up, too, because something bad was going to happen. All magic comes with a price, yeah. so that kind of yeah, alerts maybe, the person, yeah, it was but like it also her, alerts her. Yeah, freaking out over that. Hmm. Good prediction. But why she didn't go <laughs> to handle her own heart business? I don't know. Because that's my heart that well, she was around. I would be like, I need to go take care of this. You handle, you <laughs> hold him in there while I go take care of my heart. Because it, she was my trying to get to Rumpel, though. And it's also a testament to how much she actually did care about Regina. It wasn't all a facade. It was, you know, I trust you enough to essentially handle my life. Yeah. yeah. Go get my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, <laughs> yeah, that <is> happened. <laughs> so I'm just going down the list because there was a lot in Story Brick this week. Uh, we talked about how Emma cast the protection spell. Um, I was kind of wondering, so I feel like these protection spells should be a little bit stronger. And people, I mean, Cora and Regina had a pretty easy time getting through those. Yeah, that, that was another easy task for them in this episode. There's a couple easy things. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. like, let's create this fireball together and throw it at the protection spell and it'll just disappear. Combined magic. But the second time Cora tried to break through the second one, we saw right before that Rumpel, his health was diminishing, which made his power less weaker. So maybe... That's but it wasn't that. his but, power. It but was Emma Emma's put power. the spell up. Yeah. So that's why I, that was why I was confused. Just a shield. It was, a shield. It just stalled okay. them for like just five the, seconds. Just a stall. <laughs> she, she doesn't know her full strength, so she didn't know how to make it that strong. Yeah. She made it one layer. It needed to be like 100. <laughs> <laughs> you know where I heard the word protection spell? I was wondering when we watched it. was from Harry Potter. Yeah. 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 
I was like, oh yeah. I just thought true of it. So. Love. True, true love. True exactly. love. Exactly. Protection yes. of the heart. The mother. It's true love. And um, there was a, the part I was going to say was when um, Gold called Belle. Aww. Anyone else get like <laughs> yes. sentimental on that? That was conversation nice. was so, that's the first time I've ever felt like bad for Mr. Gold. Really? And, I, I love him. I mean, I, I love him. I think he's a great character, and I love when he's around, but I never really feel sorry for him mm-hmm. because I feel like he makes his own choices and that, mm-hmm. you know, he gets what he gives back, kind of. Yeah. And in this moment, it was just so heart-wrenching, mm-hmm. like, going from Belle's conversation with him right into a conversation with his son as he's on his deathbed, and they, like, reconcile, and he's like, I've been, I spent my lifetime looking for you so I could say, I love you, yeah. and I'm sorry. This, I did feel bad that for was, moment. I was like, oh my gosh, he can't die now. Yeah. Like, he just got his son back. I, I, he's full of love. Yes. And, and crap. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I'm just kidding. I just want to defend Rumple for a second, because I just feel like he is an addict to magic, and he's trapped, and he's in this hole, and that is why he is evil Mm -hmm. but i think there's a part of him that wants to be good because before all this he was you know a weakling with a good heart and now he's just so tainted because he's so drugged out quote unquote i think there's still time for him to be saved if he cared so much about love before and saying that bell was his true love then why did he do all this stuff at the beginning of the season why didn't, once he had Bell back, he just like, I get that he didn't have Bay yet, but there are other means to get it's to that the drug. end. It's mm-hmm. the addiction. Like, you can love someone and, and they'll be like, stop drinking, but you're still an alcoholic. It's just hard. Yeah. He's a magicaholic. Yeah, he's a magicaholic. <laughs> I guess, I mean, there. Well, we did say a few episodes, like near, I want to say the beginning of the season, we mentioned that magic is drug. It is an yeah. addiction. It is. Mm-hmm. Then we saw Regina struggling with magic. Yeah, she was trying to like wean off of that. Hopefully yeah. Emma won't get addicted. Yeah, oh. that's a possibility. That could and very s- maybe Snow. Friend. I mean, she's definitely learning how to harness this power. She seemed to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. You know, like ooh, there awesome. was a moment. Actually, I'm glad mm-hmm. you pointed that mm-hmm. out. There was a moment uh, the first time she cast the s- the protection spell where she was like, oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> look what I can do. I just did that. It was kind of interesting. And that just proves our point that there is good and there is evil in everyone. And we hope that Emma doesn't go off the deep end. Uh, Yeah, but we need her to start using it more instead of just doing protection spells. Maybe when Cora and Regina hit you guys with one of the arm motions that sends you flying, maybe hit them with one right back. I don't know. Give or her a like, taste of their own medicine. Lucian trampoline to like break your yeah. Fall or <laughs> She's still learning how to wield it. Yeah. I mean, and plus, it's dangerous for her to. Yeah. All magic comes at so, a price. But I feel like you know we should at least be on even platforms when we're fighting the good versus evil, as opposed what, to. What happen. price? So if all magic comes with a price, what price did um, creating that protection spell come with? The, the little protection spell? Yeah. Oh. Uh, it didn't last very long. <laughs> so it was a weak magic. <laughs> I don't she know. Got, but it still off, should come with She got sent off price. to the middle of the woods. Does she get weaker? <laughs> yeah, she did get sent she off did, to the like, middle hey. of the woods. Which actually, I almost felt like that was Rumpel protecting both of them. Or, uh, I mean, like, the fact that, like, he had, I feel like he still had power even though he was weak. Like, the fact that he didn't, like, try to, he wasn't like, wait, stay here to, like, save me. Wasn't it? But wasn't it Cora? Yeah, that's no, I'm saying yeah. Cora was the one, but I feel like he still had enough power to keep them there, or like, I don't know. Maybe not. Hmm. I think every time they say all magic comes with a price, it's usually because someone wants to use magic for against someone else, not like for themselves per yeah. se, but it's like, always like against someone else. Yeah, and like, or like with the candle, you know, like this. It's coming with the price of you get to save your loved one, but yeah. someone else is losing their loved one. Yeah, yeah. It, it affects someone else. I, th- I think you're going. There's oh. consequences to yeah. your actions, basically. Yeah, I think like pretty much magic. When you use magic, it's for something selfish, and I mm-hmm. think that's the price. You 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 want something for yourself, and you have to give to mm-hmm. exchange. And I feel like in many other instances, when they have used magic, there's a more there's more of a price than just like you being selfish or there's more of a consequence and it's obvious. 
you mean like you're saying like the the selfish reason for magic has a bigger consequence, right? It's it's bigger than just yeah. being selfish. I feel like it's something that is, you know, present or I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm confused. No by one this conversation. does. <laughs> uh, okay, well, let's just move on. <laughs> uh, I did want to mention also um, the whole like Cora, Bell, Rumple. It's not even a love triangle. It's just like his next love. Um, but the fact that like I feel like Rumple and Bell are true loves because even though he did all this evil things like that is what ultimately ended up leading to them finding each other mm -hmm. because he was the beast in this tower mm -hmm. and needed a girl mm -hmm. and whatever else and that all like everything I feel like it almost shows a destiny for everyone like they will get yeah. their happy endings yes they'll keep finding each other again can I say for um, Ben Rumpel called Bell he said uh, y you were a beautiful woman who loved an ugly man yeah, and and uh, Bell is the person who makes Rumple want to turn back to the best version mm -hmm. of himself. Yeah, that's a good relationship so right there. Sincere and honest. I thought that maybe that that would like uh, trigger her, yeah. like yeah. a true mm -hmm. love memory, and then she'd be like, "Oh, I think I might remember this man." Well, we don't know because he's still alive, and yeah. he still has his dagger. When you yeah, he got that thing back. Was yeah. there was there a moment in the show when you guys thought, oh, it might be Rumpel that's gonna die? I thought it was too obvious to be yeah, Rumpel. yeah, no. because he was already injured and already dying. I was like, you can't make it the obvious choice to die. Like, well, it could. He has to right? figure out a way to save himself. But just the way that it was promoted as someone's gonna die, I was like, well, if, I mean, if it's not the obvious one who's yeah. dying, mm -hmm. then who's it gonna be? I know we're kind of jumping around again, but yeah. I just wanted to say, I looked at my notes and I wanted to say, it was so funny to see Neil in that moment when Rumpel was saying like, I love you to Neil, because he thought he was going to die. Yeah. I mm -hmm. thought it was funny how Neil almost reverted to Bay when he was, you know, a preteen about yeah, to get yeah, sent yeah. off. Yeah. He was like, no, I hate you. I'm still angry. <laughs> and like, <laughs> turned away. Like, it was just, it was such a yeah. weird situation. It's almost like, you know, because Rumpel said earlier, like, I can turn you back into a little kid so we can have those years again together. It was almost like no time mm. had passed at all. It was cute. Yeah. It was really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and then they cry together, which was really sweet. And it was a nice father-son moment that they needed. Mm -hmm. Real men cry, and that was just, that was awesome. Yeah. I don't, they better I don't know cry. if you should use awesome yeah. with that, but it was to see just them breaking down together mm -hmm. and it was touching I mean, yeah, that was like 3,000 years in the making too so yeah. <laughs> so two last things I want to talk about are first how snow we we talked about this briefly but how snow kind of enacted this whole plan and then also I want to talk about Emma and Neil's relationship which we didn't really get to see much of this episode but I still want to mention that so first snow uses Cora's heart against her and uses Regina in this plot. Which is completely so evil. evil. Yes. So evil. So good. I mean, I'm glad yeah. she did it, but they, I know I've been kind of flippy floppy today, but <laughs> they did deserve what Snow did to them. Oh, completely. Because yeah. they both would have and have done the same things to her in like manipulating her to do things or to reveal things about other people mm -hmm. that she wasn't sure what she, she didn't know what she was doing until after the damage had already mm -hmm. been done. So she kind of took a book out of Regina's playbook and used it against her and took down Cora. Yeah. So I, I liked it. It was, it awesome. was very it was smart. smart the way that she did it. And she's like, well, your, your mother can't love without a heart. Don't you just want her love and it, her acceptance? If so Cora smart. had her heart. <laughs> I want, and it's true because when Cora got her heart back for that brief time, it was a completely different Cora. Yeah, it was. Yeah. This would have been enough. Happy. Yeah, this would have been enough. It's like you should have. You, you would have been heart. enough. Mm. <sighs> Sad. Does it make you almost feel bad for Cora? No. <laughs> Still don't feel bad. She no. made her own choice. I'm a Rumple fan or a Regina yeah. fan. Yeah. But. So Mary Margaret ended up feeling guilty very quickly yeah, about this should. whole situation yeah. Yeah. and tried to rectify it. But it was too late. 
But don't you think she would have felt guilty if she didn't do it and Rumpel was still uh, Rumpel died in place? I feel like it, it was a lose lose for double edged yeah. sword. Mm-hmm. You know, it really is. Yeah. yeah. Yes, um, but I feel like it was still, you know, as we said earlier, like it's all magic comes with a price, mm-hmm. and I feel like this her doing that like if she hadn't done it it wouldn't have been her fault that he died but it was her doing something that was the reason why right. all of this happened if Rumpel had died it would have been Hook's fault that he died because Hook's the one who <sighs> stabbed, stabbed him, him. Mm-hmm. It, like but what because, a way to go right? but it was her fault that Cora died because she's the one who mm-hmm. used the candle Exactly. Just as if Snow had done it when she was a kid, Mm -hmm. she didn't use it, and she blamed herself, but it wasn't her fault that her mother died. It was Cora's fault. It was Cora's fault. So, same situation, um, just done a less worthy person. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, Rumpel, we kind of find out, was one of Cora's only weaknesses, according to Cora. Do you believe it? I do. Um, I do. I, I do believe that she really did love him, but once the heart was out, so was he. Mm-hmm. And we didn't yeah. f- learn mm-hmm. that until mm-hmm. she had the heart back in. Yeah. I kind of believe it because Rumpel was the one who taught Cora magic, so if she didn't have Rumpel, mm-hmm. then... And she had spent her whole life being ignored, and Rumpel spent time with her and like taught her things was around her so, it's kind of like she was in a vulnerable state where no one paid attention uh-huh. to her or made her feel like she was anything and then you have Rumpel who made her feel like she was everything yeah and he saved and, her life yeah and he saved her life but yeah. then he ends up using her own daughter against her later yeah. in life well that's um, cause, that's cause well, he, he, she, she broke his heart yeah. do you believe that people I can have it. more than one true love because yes Cora said <laughs> you're like the only person that I've ever truly loved to Rumpelstiltskin. He clearly has only ever truly loved Belle. I think uh, he was in love with Mila. He was in love with Cora. Are you talking true fairy love. tale or are you talking real life? Because both. <laughs> are we realizing that we are both? <laughs> <laughs> we are both. That was clever. <laughs> um, I, I, I do think you can love more than one person in your lifetime. Oh, yeah. It would be a shame. Yeah. You can definitely love more than one person. And it's evident that Rumble has loved more than one person. But can you be truly I in love so. with more than one person? I think so, yes. I, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent about that. But you never forget <laughs> your true first love. Maybe Rumpel was Cora's first love. I, I kind of feel like Rumpel's 3,000 years old, guys. Yeah. He's, he's <laughs> he's, lived, I think he's lived a lifetime where he's going to have to have he deserves couple, true loves. a couple true loves in there because, yeah. I mean, it's 3,000 years. Of, I mean, one, one a millennium. Nine lives, perhaps? <laughs> yeah. yeah so, I mean, I mean that's like, trying to think of like yeah. what other things he could be other than a crocodile. <laughs> Maybe he's like the cat in the Sesh- Mad Hatter's world, too. Or something. Cat. Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, that's a stretch. <laughs> a self admitted stretch. Uh, so, the last thing that I want to talk about is Neil and Emma's relationship. And we didn't get to see much of it, but the brief moments that we did catch, um, Neil said, you know, are you jealous that I have a a fiancé? Is she jealous? Yes. Mm. You don't think so? I think she is. I think she's jealous. Because she she mentions, she's like, why would I care about someone I dated 10 years ago? Right, but she's just being that chick that's trying to, like, pretend that she's not but hurt by it but no. she was about to talk to him last week about hey i, I kind of like you still oh i think she's yeah. definitely yeah. still in love with them mm-hmm. honestly mm-hmm. i think that they are each other's true loves and i don't know how quickly he will dump the fiance if that will mm-hmm. happen i hope it, it has happens. to happen yeah Something's i think it's gonna happen henry might try to get them back together which i'm hoping for henry would maybe that, we so- can use his fiance to go like be with hook so that, you know, <laughs> Hook's out of the love triangle. Because, oh. you know, you you need to get Hook away from well, Emma, too. Well, do you think too. Hook can date Tiger uh, Lily? Not, they're from the same world. Yeah, you he could have dated her before, though. You, and, like, 
to put those two together, and then that clears up the space for Emma and Neil to get back to. See, I don't really feel like Hooker's really a factor in Emma's life. Like, he I flirts see. with her and stuff, but I don't really get the feeling that there's a romantic thing that's brewing. Didn't, didn't mm. Horowitz yeah, and uh, they've, Kitsis they've say? They've been teasing that there they might said be that a little bit. Yeah, like there might be flirtatious. Something. There was flirtation, but they said, like, this season they wanted to introduce other potential loves into Emma's life. Right, right. Hook was one of them. Who are the other ones? Like, August? Did they say August? No, Not really. He hasn't really been around. This um, but there was a third one. There was a third one. Hook does have a broken leg, so oh, we might uh, have to wait. What's his name? <laughs> I mean, we had yeah. the oh, Sheriff Graham. Sheriff Graham. Sheriff Graham. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Well, that was we heard. Spoiler. He's potentially coming back. Nice. Yes. It's after they told, yeah. I, after they told <laughs> us that I just wanted enough time back. for people to tune out if they they didn't want Hit that. The pod yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So, I think that's... It'll do you guys have anything else for this episode? Rumpel is still the dark one. <laughs> he and still is the dark I feel one. like mm. when he took that dagger back, I feel like he became evil again, almost. Like, I yeah, feel like there's yeah. going to be some bad I stuff. I feel like he had everyone in his corner. He had Emma talking about, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to save your life because you're family now. And being just weak and vulnerable to getting that thing back. And I was like, oh, crap. Now everyone's got to watch out for Grandpa Gold over here, like, taking them out in the middle of their sleep yeah. or something. I mean, the end was like, it was kind of like, okay, Snow, you're on your own now. Thanks for saving my life. Yeah. So that was kind of like, oh. Uh, but I'm still hoping maybe towards the end of the season he'll get better. Cool. Yeah. I, I got to admit, I, I'll, I'll miss Cora because I love Barbara Hershey. She's, yeah. She, she might come back. Great. She was fun. I, I, there's flashbacks. There's so, always yeah. flashbacks. Mm -hmm. Never, even if someone's mm -hmm. dead, Sheriff Graham, <laughs> never, <laughs> never say never right, in the words yeah. of Justin Bieber. But there, <laughs> oh, speaking yeah. of Justin Bieber, uh, anyway. There, there was the line, um, it's not about love, it's about alliance. Love is weakness. And mm -hmm. I think once Cora had her heart and she had love, that was her weakness, and she died. <laughs> <laughs> so love killed Cora is what yeah. you're saying. <laughs> yeah. It played a nice role. What is that song? Uh, love will tear us <laughs> <laughs> um, Anyways, let's move on to news and prediction or er, news and gossip, then predictions. <laughs> Gotta make sure my hat's on nice and good here. All right, so I'm gonna start with our um, Mad Hatter news because last week we said that you know they shot down the idea that there was gonna be a spinoff or that they were gonna recast um, for the spinoff. This week they're saying that. The, while the initial reports were premature, they do have an idea mm. about a spinoff, and they might do some test footage at the end of the year, but it wouldn't be... The idea isn't your typical or traditional spinoff. It's going to be much more in the light of, like, American Horror Story, uh. where there will be, like, a beginning, middle, end part, and it's not necessarily focused on the Mad Hatter, but maybe just Wonderland in general. Mm. And it would be its own separate thing. It wouldn't be where they have like a setup within one of the episodes to the setup for the spinoff or anything like that. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, gonna say yeah. uh, this like might that. not be the popular opinion, but I don't like the idea of a spinoff. No. I wish they would just create more seasons and somehow right. incorporate that into. Even what we so, are I think once upon a time it's still in its second season. It's too early to have a spinoff. But. I I think it's a good it's idea premature. just because there's so many characters, especially this season that they're bringing in so many new characters. This might be a better way for people to get the stories of the other characters faster than having to wait and still get new characters. So, I mean, it just might be an option to explore to get more answers of other things, ha of other characters. I already watched too much TV. I, I yeah. Think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, we don't I need mean, another no, show. I, I definitely, I want to learn more about the characters, but I want to learn on, like, as much as I say I wish we had the entire mm -hmm. season all together mm -hmm. at once, I just feel like that would be oversaturating my once upon a time <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So. That's true. Okay, Don't so... Too we'll, much of a good thing yeah. sometimes we'll move, is not good. Exactly. Yeah. We'll move into some casting news. This might be a spoiler alert if you don't want to know what kind of cast members might be coming in. Are you... No? Okay. Martin. Spoiler alert! <laughs> spoiler <laughs> alert! <laughs> sometimes it's annoying. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. just... It's a spoiler. Just, don't I just listen. Didn't, I just didn't want to start talking <laughs> and so then it comes on in the middle. Oh, oh, yeah, I hear you. Do it for you. We're, like, so, bracing ourselves. Probably. So, a casting notice went, off, went out for a 13-year-old British girl... <laughs> to be cast, who's, Wendy, described, Wendy. who's described as mis 
mischievous, naive, and compassionate. Wendy. And she will be appearing in episode 21, which is part of the two-part finale. Um, The first one is second 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 star star to the right. right. And straight on till morning. It doesn't say if it will be a significant role, if it's a small role, what... But, I mean, Wendy, or right. I was thinking maybe finally Henry might get a little crush on someone. Aww. She's 13, like, he's, yeah. like, 10 or 11. I forget how old he is right now. I wonder, what? what if that's not Tiger Lily? What if it's Wendy? That Neil's with right <laughs> yeah. now? Uh-huh. Ah, that's an interesting I don't, I'm not story. sold that she's from Never- I don't, Neverland. I don't think so. I'm sold that she's somehow magical I in think some she's way. Magical, but yeah. I'm not sold she's, from, she's from she's from a Neverland. fairy tale. Maybe not magical, but she's definitely from a fairy tale. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so and oh, and the girl's name will be Heidi on the show, or at oh. least that's what the that's Heidi what the, the, ni- the notice said Heidi. But I mean, that could just be to throw people off. You can't put something yeah. out there that says Wendy because then mm-hmm. everyone would know who's coming. And um, last week we were so excited about giving the final two episode <laughs> names that I forgot to tell you guys episode 20. The title <laughs> for that one is The Evil Queen. So I'm kind of mm. thinking that might be Regina's rise back into yeah, evil evilness. Mode, going, going to town on some folks or some things. Mm. Um, also last week we were so excited that I forgot to mention the Once Upon a Time magazine did come out. <laughs> <laughs> Titan Magazine released it. I still haven't been able to Me find it in neither. any bookstores in LA. So if anyone knows where I can find one, let me know. I could order it off the internet, but who wants to do things the easy way? <laughs> um, and then the finale, um, and straight on till morning, episode 22, airing May 12th. And I have a quote. I have to look it up on my phone. It's too soon. Yeah. I have a quote from um, Eddie, or from Horowitz. He says, that the the audience is they're really excited what they're doing the audience is going to have to kind of interpret things how they want it this episode is a game changer Mm -hmm. it's up to the audience how they're going to take it and he says that wait where is it hang on i gotta (laughs) find out here martin's making fun of us i'm just trying to read on my phone right now and it's too small this is important martin (laughs) Okay, <laughs> Kitsis serious. added that the theme of this season has always been the price of magic, and in the finale, we'll see that get paid. Dot, 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 whether that's death or something worse. Something worse? <gasps> What's worse What's than worse? death? Yeah. Fam- we'll find out on death. May 12th at the season finale. Having to live, so. like, I mean, what's worse than death? It's like, you. some Being people stuck, argue that yeah. the, the yeah. death pun, or, you know, being killed is like not as bad as like life in prison or, or whatever it is. Watching or, others die. Or watching others die. Yeah. Or watching. being stuck in another land without magic. That's terrible. <laughs> Something Marissa's been saying. <laughs> oh, Marissa, yeah. the dark one. <laughs> Coming soon. So Coming yeah, soon. that's all my news and gossip though. <sighs> that was okay. a lot. You're yeah. welcome. Trying Thank to you, entertain us all while we Thank do Tiana. our predictions. And now Buzz TV. I predict we won't see much of Cora anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, what do we think? What? I mean, we got to see a little bit of the previous from next episode. What do you guys take away from that? Uh, Snow is going to be very depressed for a while. <laughs> Obviously. <All right. laughs> I mean... Regina, yeah. Yeah. bad, oh. evil Regina she is pissed. back and in a big way. Big she gets a hold big. of her heart somehow, like pff, grabs Snow's yeah. heart. It she, looks like she yeah. grabs Snow's heart. That was the final yeah. thing we saw right. was her grabbing They Snow's did heart. not tease another death, so hopefully we will be death-free for one more episode. I think so. I don't think anyone's going to die in time in the so, next couple episodes. Yeah. So my prediction, while the battle still wages on between good and evil, Henry will then be stuck in the middle of it, as he always is, because you take out Snow's heart, Regina, you're taking out his grandma, or his grandmas are now fighting. No. His mom. <laughs> Gosh, this is confusing. Maury, his mom is, you. is fighting his grandma, like, taking out her heart. So Regina has to think about the consequences. Her next actions, she will never get Henry back if she kills Snow or Emma or any of them. And that's who Regina's mad at. Mm-hmm. So I'm predicting that we're going to see like an epic battle. And I want to see Emma's powers come to light more. Where it's like her and Regina doing like a whoosh off. 
with their yeah, arms. Whoosh, I, like I call it. it the whooshes because all it says is whoosh. I like you know, it. And <laughs> it's like a hand action. moves like that and yeah. it whooshes people away. So I want to whoosh off between the two of them. Oh, yeah. Like good versus evil. on the screen. Whoosh. Yeah. Just, Which, by the way, that was way too simple in their fight. Yeah, it was. W- way too easy. It was a simple episode. When, yeah, when because, Cora whooshed them yeah. away. Yeah, because if we keep having them whoosh people off, we're never going to have a fight. Because, I love this term. Yeah, because they're there yeah. with their swords ready to fight, but then they just whoosh them Who away. Who thinks that a sword is going to stop <laughs> magic? Maybe they need an enchanted sword. It was they a do. valiant effort. Only a dagger can stop. Or create magic. I, I I mean, there's so much going on in this episode, and the next episode looks like it's going to be also intense. But I'm hoping to find out more about how the crop is going with the magic beam. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping to see if that's going to lead to something important anytime soon. So. I like. I had a feeling maybe Regina won't kill Snow White. She'll take her heart and just hold it mm. hostage. In case Snow White pissed her off again, she's like, I have your heart. Don't mess with me. I can control you. I don't have any... Maybe in some sadistic way. (laughs) I don't have any predictions, but I do want to say what I hope for is that we find out more about Neil's Uh fiancé and somehow Mm -hmm. she makes it to Storybrooke so we can find that out, which I don't think we'll find out more about her until the last two episodes, unfortunately. Um, And I want... Colin O'Donohue to get better so that we can see more of it. I, I do have yeah. another prediction. I do think science is going to come into play, especially with uh, Dr. Whale and then the, the stranger guy. We haven't guy, seen Dr. Stranger. Whale for a little I, bit. I, I know, but then bit. there's still that magic, that, that book that he's not, he's not in that storybook mm-hmm. book. And then the stranger, who is obviously... Uh, Greg. Greg, yes. Greg, so Greg. I think there's something scientific. We haven't seen science. a lot about him. Yeah, I think soon something. for like a split happen. second last mm-hmm. episode. Yeah. yeah. Very being, little. Being uh, magic envy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I kind of hope in the next episode, uh, Belle, even though she's forgotten a lot of her memories, realizes, you know, this guy cares about me that much where maybe I should, you know, not be scared of him. And Oh, I, mm. I thought of another thing. Um, when mm-hmm. Rumple was on the phone with Belle, he said, go look in the mirror. What if, like, go look in the mirror and see this is the person I'm talking about. What if Belle looks into some type of mirror and, like, that jogs her memory somehow? I don't the know. Mirror of Erised? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> I'm kidding. Never or know. Or just something, some reflection of her. The magic mirror and Beauty and the Beast. What happened to King George? I don't know. Uh, King, uh, I'm stretching. King George. Magic mirror and Beauty of the Beast. I, I need to see more of him. They, I know you he, know. Yeah. Belle has the mirror that the Beast gives her. Like, to look show in me the beast. Oh, uh, I forgot about that. Maybe yeah. that comes into play. But I think that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. <laughs> Any other predictions? <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I was like trailing off and I was like, what happened to King George? I, I wonder what's going to happen to oh, him. Yeah. I know he kind of disappeared, but I wonder he's if he's still gonna around. Come back. Oh, I, I thought that they had something going on for a while. Yeah, like, me too. Mm-hmm. So, another one um, going back to Neverland. There are mermaids in Neverland. What if we saw a little mermaid? Yes. She pops up. We've been talking mm-hmm. about Little yeah. Mermaid coming back. They've and they been, have mentioned, yeah. they've alluded to a Little Mermaid before. Yeah. That, that pesky mermaid. Yeah. What if, like, if we go to Neverland, we find more different magical beings there? I think we're definitely going to yeah. find like, more magical of, beings. Like, random characters in any ended land up. that we go yeah. to. <laughs> a lot of random characters ended up in Neverland. Even in America, we will find some magical people. Uh, I'm magical. <laughs> We're all are. Okay, well, I think that wraps out tonight's episode. If you guys have any predictions, then please comment on YouTube, comment on iTunes, and you can also find us on Twitter. Where can they find you guys on Twitter? On Twitter, you can find me at TweetT22. Uh, you can find me at K-A-O-R-I-O-U-S and Tumblr as well. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at TV. And you can find me on Twitter at Katherine Kelly. You can find all of us on Twitter at AfterBuzz TV. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. See you, buddies.com. <laughs>
views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.